Welcome to Subramani. Uh, I'm going to talk a little more about interest rates. We are now clearly in the negative interest rate scenario. We will see how to react to it. So first of all, let me define uh, interest rates. Interest rates are in two parts. One is nominal interest rates and one is uh, real interest rates. Now, when you go to a senior uh, person, somebody like me and say, sir, uh, PPF interest rate is 7%, the first reaction is, say, do you know once upon a time we used to get 12% return? True. But what is the real rate that you were getting is far more important. So, what is real rate of return in a investment which you make? <clears throat> Sorry. It is a nominal rate that you get. So, say national savings certificates is 7% minus taxation, assuming for a minute that you are in the 30% tax. So, 2% is lost to taxation. So, you are effectively not even getting 7 which is promised, but you are getting 5 because 2 is lost to uh, taxation you're getting five in real ter in terms minus inflation so if inflation is in in india is about say seven percent or eight percent then or let's say seven percent you are getting minus two percent so the real return that you are getting is minus two now when somebody senior say, says we were getting 12 percent return in ppf you can tell him, but uh, sir, that time inflation was 13%. So, you were still getting minus 1. Now, we are getting minus 2. But we are clearly in the negative yield uh, territory. So, you have to know how to react to it, right? So, we have defined what is uh, nominal rate, what is real rate. So, that is true. The RBI policy is about 4 percent and I think inflation is more like 8, 6 percent. Government is saying 5 to 6 percent. But if you sit down and calculate the inflation applicable to you, which includes fuel costs, which does not, uh, the RBI does not include fuel costs and it merrily increases the uh, cess on uh, fuel. So, therefore, inflation applicable to you could be even 8, 9 percent. So, you are definitely in the negative uh, area or negative territory. How does this impact you? First of all, it means the biggest losers of course are people who are living just on interest. So, if you are living just on bank deposits and uh, etc., then you are the biggest loser. So, which means anybody who is not confident of replacing his pool, which means a retired person. So, retired persons are being shortchanged in India. When I say retired persons, I mean a person who is living off his corpus. It could be anybody. It could be a, a lady who is uh, 40 years of age who is not capable of earning or a guy who is uh, 40 years of age and who has got some serious illness and because of which he is unable to work. Right. So, all these people, anybody dependent just on interest income is losing out and losing very badly. And therefore, many people could be advising you to uh, take more risk because it's easy to earn 5 percent per month in equity than earn 5 percent per uh, uh, month in a bank deposit, right? So, somebody came and told me that in a particular scheme over last 6 years or 7 years, 5 years perhaps, he's got only 68 percent and I thought that was like amazingly good return, right? But people are uh, egged on by uh, mutual fund sellers and equity broking houses to say it is very easy to make money. This is the worst thing that you can do during a very benign interest rate regime. That is the time when every the central banker thinks this is the time when uh, everybody will remove money from the bank and buy risky assets. That is true only for two sets of people. Those who are confident of being able to replace that asset, which means he is 32 years of age and he's got a whole life ahead of him or her and then they don't care. Or the other guy who is uh, a big corporate honcho who is uh, take borrowing 5,000 crores to do a 10,000 crore project, he again doesn't care because his houses are not at risk, his family is not at risk, he is, uh, yes, nothing is at risk, not even his salary, right? But the small entrepreneur, the Ola driver, the hotelier, these are people who are shutting down with low interest rate because there is no business. So, please understand today if equity markets are high and interest rates are low and somebody is advising you, you need to put some money in equity to beat inflation, he or she is only partially right. 
yes you need equity to beat inflation but this time to put money in equity because it is easy to make money in equity is completely wrong theory you should have at least a 10 year view let me repeat at least a 10 year view if you're putting money in equity and today i don't think any of us have any visibility beyond two or three years in any business Look at the airlines business. Yes, the share prices are high, but look how difficult our state governments are making it fly, uh, making flying. If you are transiting from, say, uh, Chandigarh to Madras, uh, okay, Chennai, you want to go, which means you and let's say you're taking a flight, which is uh, Chandigarh, Delhi, Delhi, Mumbai, Mumbai, uh, Chennai. You, what happens to your RT-PCR test, right? So these are all issues. So businesses are not booming what immaterial of what the market is doing bad time to be chasing yields the central banker will deliberately keep interest rates low because they think by keeping interest rates low people will take money from the bank and uh, invest it or put it into some economic activity because of which the market will be revived or there will be growth growth momentum this is not true at all people without any risk taking abilities actually remove money from other assets bring it to the bank let me give you an example if here is a uh, 67 year old uh, man and who has been told that uh, you need 5 lakhs per annum as expenses his wife has told him that we need 50000 per month or we, we need f 5 lakhs per annum so based on that husband and wife have decided to keep 1 crore in a bank deposit and get 5% return now when interest rates go down what do you think he'll do he will remove this money and put it into equity to get higher return sensible man will not do sensible woman will not do so their husband and wife will sit and discuss and say okay we have to get five lakhs so instead of one crore we may have to keep one crore 25 so they may sell equity and put more bank deposit and protect their five lakhs basic understanding of this is not there with the reserve bank or fed and they keep on reducing interest rates which is a demand by the industry but it hurts the retired person and the retired person reacts like this he actually uh, sits with his wife discusses and they decide that um, let's say the wife's portfolio is the risk taking portfolio do you think she will go and buy more risky assets no she will tell her husband i think some sell some of my shares and put it into more bank deposit because the shares are doing well this is the time when corporate india is willing to take risk does not mean you should be taking risk in fact it is the reverse when the corp when corporate india raises money it's the best time to be selling because they are selling shares look at it this way if reliance is selling its shares if adani is selling its shares if uh, all those industrial icici bank is doing an uh, uh, NFO or doing an IPO for of uh, ICICI securities when did they do the ICICI securities IPO exactly when they could price it at 540 rupees it's taken two three four years and the price is nowhere near 540 rupees right so the pricing of assets is always done at a time when people are willing to invest that is the worst time for you perhaps to be buying right so don't chase yields don't buy assets which have gone up in value dramatically which means equity in fact asset allocation should be the most important thing that you do today so if you are a new entrant put 100% of your money in debt you will not regret if you still have this problem of FOMO that you are worried that oh the market is going away and I am not investing take risk with 5% of your money don't look at people like us we have the risk taking ability we have the experience we have the ability to sit tight so March 2020 when people were worried about this virus I said the world is not going to come to an end and I bought that is because of 30 40 years of experience of knowing what will happen you will have a completely upset mind and an upset stomach if, if asset prices fall and I think the market looks more for interest rates to go up and therefore asset prices falling. 
but if you are uh, if your neighbor is a is a reserve bank officer and he tells you that this is what we are doing it just means that the reserve bank needs more education on behavioral finance than on what theory they think they think that when interest rates go down people will remove money from the bank and spend it true only for the 32 year old not true for the 65 year old who is not confident of bringing the money from some other sources right so if you don't have the ability to replace you will be very scared and you will do capital preservation so today the people who are in the market for debt products are old uh, men and women who are dependent on interest rates they have no ability to bring money from somewhere else they may have to depend on their children so their behavior is more important and their behavior is what i have seen not what i have read in the books in the books yes it says when interest rates go down asset prices will fall true but when interest rates go down people sell other assets and replenish their capital so that their income can be held constant people don't really care what is their net worth they need income and they need cash flows after tax this is what they are looking for so i don't agree with the reserve bank in the dropping interest rate it is going to hurt the retired person but the retired person today should not go and take more risk just to compensate for this falling interest rate it is the worst time to be chasing yields if you are getting 6% in a state bank of india 3 year deposit please don't chase a 11% perpetual bond or a 10 and a half percent perpetual bond it is too damn expensive they are they are paying 4 and a half percent more than uh, the uh, prime borrower like sbi that is huge you don't look at it as four and a half it is almost double of what these people are giving you if these people are giving you six and somebody else is giving you nine and a half it means they are giving you 50% more than the least risk right so be very very careful about the assets that you buy at this stage it's not a great time to be buying assets any asset but if you think real estate will do well because rental yields may go up etc that's your call right thank you